Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Throne Breaker The Witcher Tales. Last time we helped out a Witcher called Ivo of Belhaven and, uh, well, helped him out a bit to defeat some monsters, and we got some helpful advice in the process. He's gonna try to kill Gornikora himself in a few days, but we are assuming that we'll reach that sooner than him, probably. Let's check out this shack. My lady, the homes are filled with bodies, dozens. We see no sign of decay and yet they're covered with a thick layer of dust, as if they've been this way for centuries. So I want to have that card piece, so uh, goodbye morale. And there we go, the Wyvern Scale Shield, which gives us two new cards to check out. Because helping out Ivo, we also got the Magical Barrier card over here. Boost two allies by two and give them immune. Interesting in some cases, but not something I'm going to use, I think. I have plenty of other things. And we know what the Wyvern Scale Shield does, because we've seen that a few times in the random uh, trinkets. So give a unit 8 armor, not something we'll use as well. Now, with morale down, I'm actually going to take a quick step back, because we left one of those shrines, uh, and we would use that. We could use that to get morale back up to neutral. So there we go, back to neutral, back on the path towards, well, inevitably, Gurney Cora herself, I'm assuming. Um, there's still a bit of swamp left before we reach the end, but it's not too far off. I think there was one more question mark to the north here somewhere. Or maybe not. I'm quickly gonna check the map. Yeah, right over here, right below us. Probably gonna trigger automatically. Caldwell had summoned Nilfgaardian support. Neve assumed they were not far behind. Yet in the unforgiving terrain, a full Nilfgaardian division could not hope to close the gap. Small detachments, however, light cavalry or footmen, could very well do just that. So when black-clad men emerged from the mist, the Queen was not surprised. She ordered her troops to fall in, form up and brace to defend the line. Yet the attack never came. The invaders stood silent, motionless, and Meave got a closer look. They were slouched, ashen-faced, unsure of step, and covered in sores. Isgith had treated them as cruelly as any. Teetering in his saddle, the commander broke formation. He rode forth and addressed the queen in fluent common tongue. Uh, what? Are they taken over by Gurney Cora? Half my men are wounded. The other sick. Your force does not fare much better. True. Yet we outnumber you soundly. Indeed. If it comes to combat, you are certain to win. But in this damned swamp, all wounds fester. Flesh is quick to rot. You will lose many more apart from those who fall. Hmm. What do you mean precisely? Asked the queen, her eyes narrowing, her head tilted to the side. We should part ways in peace. There's a war on, there'll be another chance to fight. Perhaps even face one another. But not here. And not like this. Um. Suddenly unsure, the Queen weighed the officer's words. Their logic was sound, though they could also prove a ruse. Your Grace. Xavier's voice came from behind Meave's back. We can't let them pass. They've done only harm. And they'll not stop and go home. Indeed. They won't. They will probably tell the other Nilf Guardians where we are exactly, which is not good either. So, uh, yeah, attack the foe. Alas, I see things differently, Meave said with a sly smile. Crush you now, and I'll have fewer to fight down the line. You seem sure of yourself, milady. Let me show you why. At them! Meave gave her mount a lash of her reins and charged headlong at the commander and his force. Yeah, I mean, what did he expect me to do? Just let him go? The Nilfgaardian chase, upon receiving the order to attack, the soldiers did not dare at the enemy with fierce war cries on their lips. Rather, they lumbered slowly, wading up to their knees in the boggy soup. Lyrians and Nilfgaardians alike had neared the limit of their strength, suffering from disease and a moisture that soaked their bones. Nonetheless, they had to muster the strength to fight and to win. But it's a shortened battle. So uh, one fierce round will end their life quickly. We will not surrender without a fight. Yeah, I don't think they'll have life to surrender, buddy. Now. Oh, they're even down on morale. That is interesting. They're even down one uh, one power because of their low morale. That's actually cool that it applies to the enemy for once as well. Now, um, let's play the war wagon first. 
Because we can then pull that back up. Can't take it anymore. And maybe even play another one if you want to. So let's pull the war wagon back. <laughs> then play another one. And Arniolf? Yeah, why not Arniolf? There we go. So another one over here. Tiny battles. And then Arniolf oh over there. That's only the beginning. And end. So that's a great start. Okay. Interesting. Is that really necessary? Uh, sorry. Sorry, yes, pal. But yeah, it is. It really, really is. Uh, let's play Blood. Uh, we get... Well, two Foragers. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, two Foragers. I'm gonna leave one of them over here. Oh. And one of them over here. Let's use Arniel first to do 5 damage on the Impera Enforcer. And then use the Forager to take these two light infantry units. That's twice 6 damage. And then once more. On the wrong guy, sadly. But uh, there we go. Wise choice. The armor is saving our lives a bit here, so four damage on this guy. And then we can use the Rivian Sapper He's gonna be a right good to kill the Big rest of our light infantry units. And the black infantry armor last. There we go. Perfect. Almost as I wanted it to. Order will triumph. It must triumph. Oh, yeah, we just killed all your allies. That's a bit annoying. Come here, let's dance. One brawler. And two damage on the Arbalest. Just going through this quickly because this is not going to take long. Order. Hoping we don't lose Isbel with this. Because that would be sad. Don't know why he's focusing on the forager there. I feel like there's other units that might be... Uh, more interesting. I'm just gonna wait one more turn. So I'm gonna use Gascon. So I don't have another use for Gascon. Then two times three damage over there and three over there, which kills ourselves another Arbalest. Life is mine now. Yeah, there's a lot of Arbalest where that came from apparently. But 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 let's use um, could use Meef. Use Meave now, pull back that Forager. And play the Onager. And another Drummer. So there we go, Onager and Drummer. Army's wasted time for one like me. Then three damage on that Arbalest. I can use the Devana Runestone to kill, uh, well, create three more Brawlers and kill them all, giving us five charges on the Onager. And a lot of boosts. So five charges is one there, one there. Taking down the champion a notch. And again. There we go. Praise be to the great sun! Then we can use the Disgrace Brawler again. Use the Regiment Drummer to get a Slinger out. Which I can't actually use at the moment. And I can't target anything with Arniel Vider, so let's end the turn. Quiet, or the Commissar will hear. And more damage to us. Let's put a disgraced warrior down. Come on, kill me! Three damage on the Derlin foot soldiers and another three. And that's basically it, because I can't target the other ones. So let's just end the turn for now. Then use the Disgraced Warrior to kill that Daryl and Foot Soldier. Use the Forager to take out those two Skellig units. Like this. We get three damage over here. And twice three over here. Uh, self and two enemies by three. There we go. And end the turn. Off to the front yet again. 
and then the marching orders will allow us to replay Neve again with taking away the Onager and then using Dagur Two Blades and another Forager. So Dagur is gonna play a lot of dudes. Give me some of that. And then we can use the Forager to take out two more of those guys. Which boosts all of them by four. And then maybe even like this. I don't even have much other uses for this, but uh, let's hit the armor a bit. Like this. Then Arnulf. And that's basically it. So again, above 200 points. They spoke the truth. You show no mercy. No, no mercy. And now we're, of course, the bad guys. Amidst the fog and dense, gnarled forest, the battle ran its course. When the last sounds of fighting had died down, Meave was not sure who'd prevailed. Then soldiers came forth, fatigued and hurt, with smiles on their lips. She saw they were hers, and only then knew victory was hers as well. But this was no time to celebrate. She let everyone rest, then gave the order to resume the march. A great Nilfgaardian force pursued them. This most recent delay had allowed it to draw nearer. So there we go. We got morale back even. We did lose 10 soldiers. But I feel like that's a sacrifice I was willing to, uh, to make there. Because they would have given off too much information if left unchecked. We have more vampires because of course, why not, eh? Before we even can get to Gurney Korra herself. Just gonna quickly get to this uh, marker and then let's fight this normal battle. Standard battle abandoned campsite. Meave cursed when her scouts reported they had encountered an Guardian camp. Just what we need, she told. Though the campfire still burned and the horses nibbled on grass, the tents were completely empty. The queen knew Iskit well enough to recognize a bad omen. So, seems pretty straightforward if I look at it. So a blood run catacan whenever a vampire is slayed, boost... Wait, what? Whenever a vampire is played, not slayed. I don't know why I, why I read that as slayed. But uh, pitfall trap. Getting off uh, some uh, plumards. And then... More plumards. Great. Uh, let's play blood. Let's play blood. Uh, the Rivian Onager and the Wagenberg. Which for some reason gets four armor now. That's a nice upgrade. Should have played the Wagenberg first. But Wagenberg on that rope. Four damage. And then kill that one plumard. Like this, I use Meave to pull back the Wagenberg. So I might be able to play it again. And then we can play the War Wagon and the Onager. So there we go, a War Wagon and a second Onager, which allows us to kill that last Plumer. And the third. Okay. That is annoying, so I could spawn three copies of a Deathwish unit and destroy them. That will actually give us what we need, right? So if we do this, we got 18 damage, which kills the Pleader. And we got six charges on our Onagers as well. Seems like a pretty well made turn. And we get a pass because it's a normal battle, I kind of forgot about that. Okay, let's pass as well. There we go, first round, won pretty easily. And then the next one is going to be similar, I think. So uh, let's head towards the end of that. So almost there, no real troubles. Uh, of course, those seizing uh, vampires are always annoying. But not something we can do too much about. But we do five damage with Arnold by now. Which gets us to that. Then I could use Meave. Pull back one of the drummers and play two more cards. Which is, I think, exactly what I'm going to do. So let's pull back one of the drummers. A uh, Forager and a Blacksmith. So the Forager can take 
a Skellig unit that I won't use anymore, like this. One man's battlefield is another man's right patch here. for harvest. I could reduce Meave's cooldown back to zero again, which I'm gonna do. Just to leave it at the end there. Use Forager to grab those two guys. Could use Meave one more time if I wanted to. But for now that would mostly be for destruction purposes. So... One more drummer. Put Gascon on the field. Nothing personal, I assure you. I know. Let's let's pull another one. Let's get that <sighs> here. Who's adapt Not over there? Not off these school loans. And get another. Well, might just go for the Rivian Sappers. There we go. And then use the. Let's connect in the, in the last turn. In the last turn. Uh, so let's just get the Hushduk in between the drummer and. Hmm, no, in between Not here. Already, so I can uh, use the Forager in the next turn. So we can do five more damage, which is fine over here. And then the turn. Still getting damage right in the drummer. That's not too bad. We're definitely gonna win this on points. Now, six damage on the Garcane over there. Use the Rivian Sapper to. It's gonna be a right Do good level. Four living. damage over Big here. Beautiful. Can't kill one of my own units, so let's just deal some more damage over there. Uh, gonna use the Forager on these two guys. That doesn't actually boost any of my other units, because it doesn't have that same Death Wish unit. Arnold doesn't have that same Death Wish. Uh, so let's use Meath again. Get the Angrani Blade out. Do it like this. Then. Choose an ally and play all copies of it from your deck, which is fine. And we use Egg and the reinforcements. So Egg down uh, up here. The knight should help. Our we can damage up it. the one of the catacans. Then the reinforcements I can actually use on the foragers, and we get three more foragers out of our deck, uh, which I'm gonna have to put down strategically. So one over here, oh, be ashamed to let this one over here, and the last one is going to go to waste, sadly. But we do get four damage with the Akimara, uh, with the Lance Knack like that, so like this. Then we get one Forager over here, and one Forager over here. And we get a small boost to Dogger Two Blades as well, so 344 points in a single round. That's not bad, if I do say so myself. Just keep in mind, that was with... Oh no, that was with 10 cards. That was 10, 10 cards. So, victory! Another patch of monsters is patched. That was... Yeah. I used the word patch twice there, so no uh, no pun intended. But, uh... Okay, so... To... From Colonel Ferris Leogliogwir to Corporal Dwillin Fionir. Queen Meave has wormed her way through the trap and is now headed for the Red Lobodon. You must cut off her escape route at all costs. Should you fail, every third soldier in your unit shall be lashed and sentenced to a month of solitary confinement. Yeah. We, we know, guys. The Nilf Gardens are the bad guys. We know. They even treat their own people badly. We, we get it. We get it. Where does this go? Oh. Looks like I can go over here, but apparently the shadow of that tree blocks me from going any further. Did I actually access this yet? I think I did, right? Yeah, so we have a large pool of water over here, which I'm probably not going to be able to enter. Right, oh. That was an exclamation mark. The Lyrian force had reached the very heart of his gift. From every branch, vine and shrub hung leeches and ticks by the dozen. Swollen with blood, their abdomens glistened, glowing red in the misty air. Air so putrid it set Meave's head to spinning. She paused at a moss-covered boulder, pressed her flushed forehead against its cool surface. Her soldiers passed by, pallid, filthy, drained. She wished to say something, lift their spirits. But instead a cough rattled her breast. Suddenly, splashes all around Meave in the water, as if a rain of fist-sized drops had begun to fall. The queen lifted her heavy gaze. Seemingly on command, ticks and leeches dropped into the warm, soupy waters 
then clumsily wriggled off toward a dead alder grove. Meave knew at once what skulked behind the trees. Gernicora, Isgit's mistress. Isgit's queen. Okay. Weapons at the ready! The queen roared. Close ranks! The Lyrians quickly converged, formed a wall of shields and crouched behind them. Terrified. They stared as a multitude of eyes flashed open amidst the branches while revolting, muck-covered beasts rose from the gurgling waters around. Oh, this is gonna hurt. silently uttered a prayer. Hail Melitaly, great mother, maiden and crone, ever have us in your care. Here we go. Gernicora herself didn't expect to fight her right already. Ooh, new music. Me felt the compulsion to avert her eyes from the muck-covered horrors surrounding her unit. The very sight of them made her nauseous, her chest tightening, holding back a scream. In the end, with great difficulty, she raised her sword. The queen only hoped her man would not notice the trembling in her hands. Eliminate Gernicora. So we're short in battle, we only have one round to pull that off. And if that number was any indication, it's 110 points strong. So, 110, she passed, Everyone, so it's the same model. Rally to me! Gurnikora, talents. Tis always darkest before the dawn. Glad you're with us, eh? Gurnikora, talents. Every two turns before turn starts, spawn a Gurnikora fruit on the melee row. Whenever a Gurnikora fruit is destroyed, Neve discards a random card from her hand. Oh, crap. If on the ranged row, drain Gurnicora by 3 when this unit's power reaches 10, explode and damage all enemies by 3. Every 2 turns on turn end, move every ally to this row and transform self into Gurnicora Mother. Let's check that out as well. So, Mother every 2 turns on turn start, move all allies to the other row and transform self into Gurnicora again. And we need to kill her. Hmm. Okay. So let's start us off with a war wagon. You can try to win them all, but you won't. Then use me and Granny Blade to pull that back. Ah! And check out what we have. So we could go for Egg later on, which is good. Maybe even put an Onager down so we can benefit from all the destruction I'm planning. Maybe even both of them. Yeah, both of the Rivian Onagers on the field right now. Put them in the back. So we can actually do that. So if we destroy a Gurnik or a Fruit, Meave discards a random card from her hand, so that is also not good. Oh, and we can't target. Oh, that is... That is not good. How do we damage her then? Ha! Interesting. Interesting. I'm gonna have no uses for my Rivian Onagers then until the explosion goes off. So let's end the turn for now. Majesty! These parasites! They feed on our blood! Indeed they do. Indeed they do, buddy. But that works in our favor, actually. Because now we can actually damage those fruits by tree. And let the cycle continue without them damaging us. Um, damage self and two enemies by tree. Might as well do that, right? Let's put the drummer down first. Yeah, let's put the drummer down first. Left. Right. And then Left. hold off on anything right. else. There we go. Then we'll see what the drummer actually plays. We got a disgraced <laughs> warrior. Oh, wait a second. She's vulnerable now. Okay, 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 okay. Give me a second then. Um, she is vulnerable now. So blood. Definitely blood. So let's put... The Wagenberg and Egg on the field. So Wagenberg over here. And then Egg over here as well. That's I nine damage on Gurnikora herself. I guess it's five points, but I'm not gonna use the five points on the Gurnikora's fruits. Because otherwise we're gonna lose cards. So Wagenberg on Ooh, that is also dangerous. But the next turn she's gonna move them back probably. I'm gonna end the turn. I'm gonna have to see what happens. How quickly the scales tip. Okay, the storyteller comes and chimes in. Um, yeah, the Devana runestone. And spawn three copies of the Disgraced Warrior and consume them. That gives us more charges on the Rivian Onagers. 
which is going to be handy in a second. But what else do we have? We have the Wagenberg. We could technically use the 5 damage on the Wagenberg, but I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, so let's just end the turn. Now, Aratusa Adept on the Olmager. Uh, I'll ever pay off these school loans. That's once. And the turn. So now they're going to go over there. And now we need to. I really need to start damaging them because otherwise they're going to be annoying. Beasts can be slain. They can be overcome. Okay, so now Aratusa Adept again. As you yes. wish, And again on the Rivian Onager. The Wagenberg will use that in a second, but now we can use the Rivian Onager to stifle the fruits that are at 7 and put them to 4 again. Now I also need to be careful because I can actually use Neve and Granny Blade again. Do I want to do that just yet? In two turns, she'll move again. Yeah, let's end the turn. So now, I'm a bit too high on the Artusa Adept front. So let's just use the reinforcements and get the drummer back. Oh no, no, shit. I mispressed. I mispressed. I needed to use the reinforcements on the Omagers. How are we gonna deal with this? That was annoying. Yeah, that was completely my own fault. Drummers then? Drummers it is. I can use... Meave and Granny Blade. I might still be able to do my combo here. So, let's pull back the drummer as I wanted to do. So pull back the drummer. Now, we use... A blacksmith and the uh, where is he? Where is he? The sapper. So the blacksmith will allow us to use reinforcements again and use that on the onager this time. So there we get four onagers, and that loses our sapper sadly. Which is not a problem. Uh, we have now 10 times... Ooh, this is going to be close. Um, we could use the Rivian Onagers on the Gurnicora. So we're going to do that right now. I guess. Just damage her all the way. That's going to put her up to 11, if I'm not mistaken. So 11. That means that if we use the Disgraced Warrior now on Gurnikora Mother, we get this. And then with the Wagenberg, we can finish this off. Is that done? We lose all our cards, but... I, I there we go. Gaverni Care, down. And now don't forget to burn the body. That was a cool After play. battle in his gift, Meave remembered very little. It seemed a nightmare. Its details a haze. The sensations very real. Amidst a thick fog, she fought in a frenzy, desperately hacking at the scourge that advanced from all sides. In the end, silence fell over the swamp. Its boiling waters lay calmed. The ticks and leeches were gone, while Gurnicora lay among rotting leaves, covered in blood, unmoving. But still a fearsome sight. Burn the corpse, rasped the queen. And we move on. The soldier's eyes darted about in a series of silent glances. It took Meave a moment to realize the difficulty. They still feared it. Though the monster's lifeless body lay on the ground, they dared not go near. Were she to repeat the order, they would carry it out. Yet she did not wish to force that on them. Swallowing her own revulsion, she walked up to Gernicora's corpse and set it alight. The air soon filled with the suffocating stench of burning hair and flesh. Sparks belched out as melting fat fell on flame. Until finally, 
nothing was left of the bloody mistress but scorched bone. The Lyrians resumed their march towards the banks of the Yaruga. They forced their weary legs to maintain a swift pace and stole no second glance at what they'd left behind. Journey Cora Trophy. Uh, that's the parasite, actually. That is creepy to see that animated. Okay. And there we have Journey Cora's burnt corpse and our morale actually dropped to the lowest it could. Um, that is interesting. Wait, was that an exclamation mark, mark that just popped up there? It was, wasn't it? Well, look at this area. This is really cool. I'm actually going to check out the map. We couldn't have gone any other way, right? Yeah, so this is Gurnikora's Valley. Uh, didn't expect her to, to fight her, her so soon. But let's go to the camp. And we can make some final upgrades. Final as in final for this episode. Not, of course, the final final. Although, I think, yeah, I have enough to actually finish this. So let's upgrade the Alchemist Laboratory to its maximum. Don't know if we get a... Yep, we get a Dogs of War trophy for that. So all Raynard units... Uh, Raynard units, Gascon units. And then if we upgrade the Cartographer's Stable to increase Meave's movement on the map, we actually get all the upgrades. There we go. Army Camp Tycoon. And I think there's actually another chapter after this. So I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of these resources. I'm quickly going to check the Command Tent as well. Because I want to make every unit I have available and check out Gurney Cora's trophy. So, deploy. Seize a bronze enemy unit. After six turns on turn start, return to hand. Okay, so that's the trophy we have in our hands probably then. Seize a bronze enemy unit. Cool, but that's something I'm going to use. I'm happy with what we have right now. So the horse thief mark a unit after three turns on turn start. Switch its power with this unit's power. So let's make one of those. Because I'm only missing a few units that I need to make, I think. I don't know. Lillian Pathfinder. I haven't made those yet. So let's make one of those as well. Then the Straight Infantry has upgraded. Crushing Trap. The Mantlet. I haven't made that yet. A bit more wood. Do I need to make the Crushing Trap as well? Don't seem like I have one of those. So let's make that. There we go. One big happy family. That's the trophy you get for making... Uh, at least one unit of every Gascon or Reynard unit available. So there we go. I feel like we're getting a, a full house here. Or as the trophy said, one big happy family. Although the happy part is not so much the case at the moment. Because uh, morale is at the lowest it can be. So next up, uh, we're going to move out of Isgit, I suppose. We're going to leave Isgit behind and move on to further pastures. But before that, we're going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye. Yeah,